Fãs do Telecine, bem-vindos ao Preview. Hoje temos um programa inteiramente dedicado a alguém super especial e ele merece. Afinal, não é qualquer um que consegue construir uma armadura e virar um super-herói. Com vocês, o playboy bilionário Tony Stark, ou o Homem de Ferro. Mr. Stark, you've been called the Da Vinci of our time. What do you say to that? Absolutely ridiculous. I don't pain. Ele completou 50 anos de muita vaidade e heroísmo. Seu nascimento se deu nos quadrinhos em março de 63, quando o mundo real estava mergulhado na Guerra Fria. It's an imperfect world, but it's the only one we've got. I guarantee you the day weapons are no longer needed to keep the peace. I'll start making bricks and beans for baby hospitals. Já se discutia a adaptação para os cinemas desde 1999 e alguns diretores foram ligados ao projeto, como Joss Whedon, Nick Cassavetes e até Quentin Tarantino. Mas os dois primeiros filmes acabaram nas mãos de John Favreau, que também interpreta o motorista rap. A escolha deu em sucesso. Stan Lee, who created the character, said that Iron Man got more female fan mail than all of their other superheroes put together. If we have more adult characters and we have Gwyneth and I, it's kind of this interesting love story in the middle of it. And then I think a lot of it was just the tone of the film. The tone is a little bit more um, uh, intellectual and sometimes a lot less intellectual than this genre tends to be. Sometimes you gotta run before you can walk. Tudo bem que o Homem de Ferro é bom, a gente sabe, mas os antagonistas também merecem algum destaque. Afinal, o que seria do herói sem o vilão? A célula terrorista que raptou Tony Stark no primeiro filme era uma dica do vilão que aparecerá em Homem de Ferro 3. O personagem de Ben Kingsley usa um anel em cada dedo. No segundo filme, o papel do antagonista coube a Mickey Rourke. Who's kind of has a vendetta against Tony from his past that Tony doesn't even know about it. If you could make God bleed, people will cease to believe in him. They will be blood in the water and the sharks will come. Uh, the Monaco sequence was a little bit tough just because we were really um, mixing a lot of live effects with uh, CGI and also the at the end the uh, the Japanese garden the kind of biggest sequence in in act three it was just a lot of faith because they were basically holding up cardboard uh, um, cutouts of these uh, newfound team of enemies against us and and Don Cheadle and I John as Rhodey and I as Tony just had to kind of pretend that we were in the middle of some amazing fight. Mr. Stark displays textbook narcissism. Agreed? Pois é, o cara tem carreira solo, mas obteve a ajuda de Rhodey. With Rhodey, he realized he's not an island. E da bela agente da Shield, Natasha Romanoff, para os íntimos Viúva Negra. I want one. No. Yeah, I met with John Favreau, and he was so he was so ambitious. You know, had such had such kind of high hopes for this character. Um, I did mostly Muay Thai and boxing and kickboxing and uh, a little bit of gymnastics and kind of everything. E foi através da Shield de Nick Fury que Tony Stark se uniu aos Vingadores. Ele pode ter aprendido a trabalhar em equipe, mas está acostumado a ser a estrela principal. Uh, genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. <laughs> que venha Homem de Ferro 3. You're not a man. You're nothing more than a maniac. I'm not afraid of you. No politics here. Just good old-fashioned revenge. E aí, gostaram? Se o programa deixou vocês com saudade do Tony Stark, não deixe de vê-lo nesse fim de semana na super estreia do Telecine, The Avengers, Os Vingadores. O preview fica por aqui. Até a próxima.